Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our sale on the 19th of Se February, not September, February. And uh, this sale is a toy sale. No furniture, I'm afraid, this sale. Uh, the um, supply for the sausage factory has, has withered down <laughs> due to the uh, fallout from sort of Christmas and lack of house selling and the like uh, but we do have a so it is it is back in the pipeline so one of the warehouses filling up is just not quite ready to go but it will be next week so don't worry about that but yeah one week without um furniture so probably a slightly later start to make the small start at the time they normally do not to confuse people any more than i already am anyway toys today and therefore we've got james james Hancocks, who's going to talk to you about the toy sale. Well, talk to us about the toy sale. So, James, what we got? Good selection of toys and models. There are quite a lot of EFE and Corky buses and coaches, always popular with collectors. Lots of Brighton Hove themes and Southdown, lots of local interest. Then uh, a live steam two and a half inch oh, gauge wow. locomotive does need quite a lot of restoration. There's probably hours of work there, but it was a nice thing in its day. How, and how old is that? Probably 1950s. And, and scratch probably, built? Or no, made from, made kit. from kit. Probably from yeah. Bassett Lake parts. Oh, nice. okay. And then other bits of model railway and so on. These two Hornby 00 sets from the 60s in fabulous condition. Just one of those survivors, not huge money but just, just one of those things that does sometimes survive. And that's lot number 1261. And that is nope. lot number 1260. 1260, 1260. great. Just gone back, okay, but cool. it is 1260. Wonderful. Okay, and then. then there is a Corgi James Bond Aston Martin. Really nice example. Box has got a bit of wear and the envelopes open, but they usually are. But even so, um, at sort of 150 to 200 pounds, they are always a popular item. Nice. On the historical front, these Beatrix Potter figures were actually produced by Warren, and there is a label on the base of each of them to prove it. And they're produced sort of just before the First World War. Um, Warren changed to Limited in 1917, so they're pre-1917, but a bit more interesting than the sort of endless supply of Bezik. Beatrix Potter figures that you usually find. There's also a good selection of dolls and teddy bears. No particular highlights that are worthy of mention, but certainly something there for most collectors. Fantastic. Thank you, James. Lovely. Thank you very much. There we go. If you have any other toys, uh, collectibles, uh, and James also turns his hand very effectively to weapons and other items in the specialist sales, Drop him an email by all means or drop one to the usual valuations at Goranges and they will find their way to him. What else is in this sale? Well, let's drift backwards and have a look along here. Um, sitting behind it, he didn't mention it, but that's one of these automatons from the um, sort of late 19th, early 20th century French. And you wind it up and the rabbit should pop out. This is meant to be a, a, a cabbage, I think. And, and the rabbit pops up and sort of perks its ears up and it looks around and sings your song and then buys your pint. No, it doesn't go quite that far. But this one, uh, the mechanism is not fully operative. So um, one can only speculate precisely what it might do. Lot 1307 Gosh. should restore to good <laughs> effect. Um, silver, we're down by the silver. Let's have a little poke about uh, a few lots under here. A couple of things stood out to me that really caught my eye. This is lot 1877. It's a snuff box. It's, it's unusually heavy. So it's thicker and more solid than one might normally expect. Unmarked, it's lost a side lip to the inner lid. Um, but very much, if you think about, we used to see lots of those Chinese relief carved ivory card cases and the like, exactly the same sort of decoration. Um, so I would be saying this is Chinese or made by a Chinaman um, in Burma or somewhere like that. Uh, nice thing. Um, and then uh, adjacent to it, another lot here, lot 1878. That's rather splendid, isn't it? Mm. So this is Niello ware, this, this dark black decoration, um, typically associated with Russian production, not always, but in this case, uh, what have we got? Let's have a look. Yes, it is a Russian one. Um, we've got some marks carefully under the sellotape. Well done, team. Um, but Tour de Fell, Eiffel Tower in the middle, um, rather splendid that. I can't see a date, so it would be interesting to cross-reference that with the date of it being 
constructed but still a good thing i like that so there we are two interesting bits of silver uh we'll just pause while we go around the other okay side. so mooching around around the back here what have we found there's always something to find isn't there 1389 two pleasingly carved oak panels there we go I'll stick them next to each other nice. one two differing styling uh probably part of a piece of furniture or some panelling in an interior but still got some character and quite nicely done uh sitting next to them these are great fun 1390 uh they say underneath codes um but uh they're not original code stone unfortunately these are resin copies of keystones so they'd sit in the middle of an arch over a doorway or what have you but really lovely things and I mean, for all its sins, resin does reproduce in a particularly uh, effective way for this sort of thing. So there's the companion sitting there. Nice ornaments on a bookcase. They've been fitted to take hangings, so um, one can display them on the wall or what have you. But they're rather good decorative things. The real thing would be very valuable. 1390. 1390. Yeah. Uh, we've got a great big bronze ball here. <laughs> got 1424. Some scent bottles. As always, Chinese items, 1452. There's quite a delicately decorated vase there. Lady with parasol. Nice colours. Um, Dan will have assessed that, given us his opinion on its uh, precise age. Um, decorative painting here. This caught my eye. Good subject matter. Uh, I think it's a modern... Um, effectively a modern copy in the style of something a bit older but um, but it's got a nice look and it's just a decorative work it strikes me as being very in vogue that's lot 1723 uh, there's other things hogarth prints there's some blue and white wares here's a um one of these rather fancy services this is bearing the crossed swords mark of mycin um Adam would have had a look to decide whether it's sort of Meissen or whether it's sort of Dresden you know of the area but not fully Meissen uh, but nicely decorated hand painted panels pierced through the sides date wise definitely 20th century um but uh, a selection not a full service there that's lot 1401 I'm seeing some wines I'm seeing art glass I'm seeing 18th century Delft ware so as ever, a good selection. Just a quick peek at the jewellery now. OK, so in the jewellery, again, quite a nice little selection there. Must be 50, 60 lots or so. Uh, picking out a few highlights for you. There's something you don't see every day. Look, 1931, a uh, silver labradite and various other sort of semi-precious stones in their bracelet. Um, I don't think Roger's identified where it is, whether it's Mexican or, or otherwise. There is a little mark upon it. But there we go, rather stylish sort of bracelet. 1943 how about some cufflinks these are nine carat gold they're really lovely chunky examples look really good solid thick ones and you haven't got well depends how you feel about other people's crests you've got there a uh, rather smart sort of um looks like a sort of smoking growling leopard's head dog's head crest there mm. and then on as, as well a sort of armorial Right. Some arms. So yes. there we go. Those those come with those. 1943. I think the estimate's four to six hundred. Okay. 1939. A ring, but a little bit different. Trying to show you something different for a change. This one is diamond and yellow sapphire. Um, it's a sort of half hoop, half eternity type ring. Um, estimate there two fifty three hundred. Um, often do gentlemen's watches. There's a rather smart ladies omega. Very stylish. That sort of oblong dial. Um, Looks like it needs a bit of a buff up, but uh, it is going. I think I can see it moving. It's I'm not sure if it's small, moving it? as quickly as it ought to, but um, perhaps it's not moving at all, in fact. But there we go. It's uh, Yes, it is. There we are. It is going. Look, 1970. Nice dinky little Omega. Yeah, lovely. Uh, 1977. More cufflinks. These catalogues are yellow metal, as they're not hallmarked, um, but rather pretty, delicate and light, but of the batten construction, so perhaps easier to put on. Um, modest estimate, 40 to 60, probably make a bit more than that. And last but not least, we do like a rummage yacht, 1955. What do you get? You get this sort of gilt cut steel bracelet. You get a rather pretty little split pearl set twin brooch there, set with the ladies. That looks like it's missing perhaps a pearl from the centre. A great big um, Scottish Hardstone brooch there, possibly missing something there. Nice registration mark there, which means you can find when the design was registered. Um, and then a few other bits. You get a sort of uh, 
cameo brooch there in pinchbeck and a pair of most unusual drop earrings made of venetian glass so there we go what a rummage lot as ever come along to Gorringes and have a rummage you never know what you might find as always any queries uh, let us know last call i think this one for the deadline for the fine sale for the spring fine sale so if you've got anything in mind for that drop us an email give us a call we'll be happy to come and have a look thank you very much